Good evening and welcome. Happy Tuesday, everybody. How are you? Casey, how are you doing over there in Iowa? I am doing great. I'm set up outside. It's beautiful out here tonight. You're outside? Yeah, I got it set up out in the garage. I'll post a picture on Facebook later when we get done. Yeah, I got to see that. (laughs) I got to see that. That's awesome. You have a crowd there? Uh, I got a couple people here anyway. I kind of posted it a little late. I forgot. I was going to do it earlier in the week, and then I time got away with me with the grandson. Yeah, I hear you. And I think KJ, is she on tonight? She said she was going to, she wanted to pop in and say hello. I um, I could pop her in on the I don't the hear her, though. She's not here in Connecticut, or in Iowa. No, I know. She, she said you, hold on, I'm just texting her. Um, she said she was going to st- say something, but I don't know if she was going to do it. Um, well, anyways, let me just welcome everybody, and I have a very special guest here tonight, and I'm going to tell you all about it. Katie's here, and she is the mother of Brayden. So we're going to have a little conversation. We're also going to talk, talk about being the observer, and I'm going to share my wellness tip for you guys. And what else are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about all the events we have going on. We have a lot going on. So if you want to call in, the number here is 646-891-5252. So I'm going to I'm going to just get right into this cuz Katie's sitting right here with me. Hi Katie, welcome. Hello. So, Katie, you want to tell us a little bit about this magical little baby boy, Brayden? Yeah, um so I have an 8-month-old son named Brayden. Um he was uh diagnosed when I was 33 weeks pregnant with a neurological condition called lissencephaly. It's and a agenesis of the corpus callosum. Uh, it's super, super rare. It's about one in 100,000 kids have it. It's basically when the child is born with little to no um, brain folds. So they're, it's consider, it's actually called smooth brain. And um, it has pretty significant side effects where severe developmental delays, um, difficulty feeding, uh, very immature immune system, and um, seizures basically coincide with it. And it's a very, very scary prognosis, especially because it is so rare. There's really little to no information on it. So. Yeah. yeah, and we were we were talking before we came on, and the whole the whole pregnancy therefore ended up being like a, a terror. Yeah. yeah, it was a it was a nightmare from start to finish. Um, my husband and I had had um, some unfortunate miscarriages going into trying to be parents, and uh, once we became pregnant with Brayden, we had about thirteen weeks of just scary, but really, really. really happy excitement and then um, for my 20 week scan they noticed Brayden's leg looked a little different and they weren't sure why Um, so they basically the doctor the high risk doctor came in and gave us a piece of paper that said that it could possibly be clubfoot and that they'll have to do some more genetic testing even though we had had genetic testing done prior and on the piece of paper basically it said that like it, it could be nothing at all or it could be some rare genetic thing that is absolutely awful our child's going to have severe delays and so that sent to sort of in a tailspin then the genetic uh, testing for that came back that there wasn't anything going on so we had a quick breather and I had my baby shower which was absolutely amazing and like this normal I just wanted normal <laughs> even though they kept say, seeing that Braden's foot was still different we were completely I guess as okay as parents can be because we're like okay well you know what? we'll take this we'll handle it and it's not anything too significant and then at 32 weeks um, the doctor said that they noticed slight fluid on Braden's brain which she said for boys could be normal but just because of his foot, we're going to send you for an MRI. And less than a week later, um, we had the fetal MRI, and uh, we I got the phone call. I actually called the doctor for the results, and we were just told um, it's lissencephaly, and he doesn't have a corpus callosum. I'm so sorry. Uh, we'll put you in contact with a geneticist. And that was the end of the conversation, and it kind of just was 
uh, your living nightmare. So no warm and fuzzy, no... No, absolutely no warm. Everything that we learned about lysencephaly, we, of course, you Google, which I never recommend for anyone because it's the lifespan is not great for it, and we had to try and find some answers, and we were basically told, we'll wait and see. Which that's the is, thing about Google, though. We don't. We can't stop ourselves. No, that's like the first thing they tell you not to do, but yes. you have to do it because what else are you going to do? Right, because you want to learn and you <laughs> yeah. want to know. And you exactly. want to know what you're coming up against. Yeah, and it was actually, um, I, from just from Googling and not being able to have, I mean, we met with so many doctors just trying to get some sort of answer so we could, we had accepted our son was going to have issues and I guess as much as you can accept it we had made a plan with the NICU um, because we were from the doctors that we had met with had been told like it was a 50-50 chance whether or not he would survive birth so we had met with the NICU to kind of make a care plan about how much intervention we were willing to do and to kind of prepare for the worst and it was actually, I found one family on Instagram, a little girl named Emma, who I talk about a lot on Braden's page. Um, they, they call it, their foundation's Embrace Life Emma. She has listened thoughtfully. And for the first time I was like, oh my gosh, okay. He might be okay. Like Emma has a lot of difficulties, but she's here. And for me, just seeing that a child survived was huge. So that was kind of... So the, let's tell everybody the page on Facebook that they can follow. Um, yeah, it's called uh, Journey for uh, Journey for Braden. It's on Facebook, and it's kind of... I want to try and help any family that I can just not feel like they're alone. Like, being a... We're, my husband and I were 31 years old. Like, you don't think these things will happen to you, especially when we went to such extensive routes to make sure that we had a healthy child because that's what anybody wants and I remember when we found out about Braden's neurological condition I think we just we lost all faith we lost everything and we just felt so alone for so long and I just want to one family if they search something for Braden's page to come up and be like okay like Emma's account was for me like okay we might be okay Right, and there could be some hope. There's hope. Just give somebody hope. Yeah. So we're going to take a caller, and, yeah. and then I'm going to ask you some more questions. Absolutely. Because I have, I have a lot yeah. of questions. <laughs> I have a lot of questions. As do many people. Yeah, uh, sure. <laughs> um, Casey, uh, when you're ready, we can take that caller. All right, let's Hello. go. Hello. Let's go. <laughs> I. I thought maybe you went out to the field or something, and no. I was like, where do you go? <laughs> okay. Hi. Hi. This is Jillian from Atlanta. Hi, Jillian. How are you? Hi. I'm doing good, Jeannie. Good to hear your voice. Nice um, to hear from you. Yeah. Um, um, I'm really intrigued by this, um, what you're talking about um, with uh, Braden. Um so I can't wait to listen to the rest of the story. Um, I kind of got a little glimpse of the highlights on the Facebook page, so I'm kind of excited to see where this is headed. <laughs> um, yeah. But at any rate, um, I was wanting to know, um, just if you could get a sense from any of my guides, um, as far as any kind of, if they see any career path moves or anything for me in my future. So what are... And what are the steps that are, I, I see a bunch of steps and I don't know what the steps are. Are you hmm. building a walkway? A walkway? No, um, <laughs> but I've talked to you in the past and every time there's some kind of a pathway. This is so funny. like the third time that this has come up, but they've always been pathways before. This is the first time it's been steps. <laughs> Yeah, so, so it, it feels just, like yeah. it's a walkway, but they feel like it's like um, there's steps, and um, and it could be just a going with with your own spiritual journey that you've been on, um, and uh -huh. that could be just what they're showing me. Yeah, um, I, because I that's, think, yeah, that's that it. That's I, I, it, like a, alignment. Yeah, I feel like I'm definitely my my path. Um, I, I feel like I'm really going in the right direction. I mean, I I know that I am. 
Um, I've, my spiritual growth has been pretty amazing over the past year. So I know that I'm on, on a good path and heading in the right direction. So that's, that's a good sign. Yeah. And you are in healthcare, correct? Because I'm getting that um, I, symbolism. Yeah. Yes, I okay. am. Uh huh. I'm a nurse. Mm-hmm. And so, but there's been a shift about that job, about that position. Um, no, it's just kind of been stagnant. So I've just seen if there's any. I've been with the same company for um, eleven years, and I'm just seeing if there's anything else in my future. I'm remembering a little bit. Wasn't there some administration issues? That, ha- yeah. that you had had in the mm-hmm. past. That was like a year ago, right? It was like mm-hmm. I feel like it, that was a while still ago. Con- it still continues, but um, luckily I've um, I changed my perspective, so it's right. um, really really helped things along. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I do feel like there's more for you, but I feel like um, it's about owning more about yourself like being confident in order to make that next step. They're showing like that's that decision that you have to align with. Um, and I feel like that's been the struggle. Who, who has the, um, the breathing with the, I'm having like a hard time uh, taking a full breath. It's lung stuff. I don't know. It could be maybe my mom. Okay. Um, she's on the, she's, she's transitioned. And who's the male figure on the other side? Oh, um, maybe my dad. Okay. I don't feel like, I'm not feeling like it's your parents because they both departed a while ago. This feels like a, a newer departure. Oh, is it Pete? Um, yes, I'm feeling like yes, 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 yes. Um, and a very upbeat personality. Do you understand that? Oh my gosh. He just passed away July the 7th. Um, and he has a lot to say, like, and I don't know if he had, like, lung issues, but, like, I have such a hard time to, to yes. take a deep breath in. Yes. Um, and a little yes. stuff, I don't know what he had in the head, um, if he had cancer or if he had something that went to the head, but it's a, the oxygen is affecting the brain as well for okay. the lack of oxygen. Okay. okay. It's just his way of letting me know that it's him. Um, he he, he said, died suddenly. We don't really know what happened. So, Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it was, um, mm-hmm. it's something to do between the, the lung and, and the brain, for sure. It's like, he didn't have enough oxygen, and I just feel like things got dizzy, and then he was gone. That's kind of what okay. I feel like. Um, okay. Yeah, and I feel like he was fairly, like, you know, a uh, happy guy, and, and, you know, there was a lot going on. Yeah. Okay. Does he and have he anything was, to say? For, um, he, he was, was my, he's my daughter-in-law's father. So, and he was a, um, he was the caregiver. Yeah, he took care of his okay. wife. Okay. Your daughter-in-law's father. Yeah. Am I getting that right? Right. Yeah. Okay. So I'm writing that That's down. Correct. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> he's totally cracking up now. He's he's so funny. So that's his personality. Oh. He's like everything is fine. He's like a lot of worry, um, but everything is fine. That's what he's mm-hmm. saying. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, oh. And I just feel like there had to be this um, crossing for him to take care of her in a different way. And she has she since passed as well? Or is she just really ill still? Mm-hmm. Um, she's um, not in, in the best of health. So, yeah. yeah. I feel like that. I feel like um, really unstable. So... I don't know if she mm-hmm. uh, has a form of like dementia or she's in and out, but I feel like that. I feel like there's a weakness about her, um, and mm-hmm. it feels systematic. It feels systematic, like it's not in one area for her. And uh, right. he just needed right. he needed to be able to care for her in a different way. Yeah, okay. and that's how he can. Okay. That's yeah, how he could do that. I got yep. it. Oh wow! Yep. Wow. Does he have any messages for his daughter? Um, that's his way of letting her know that everything is okay. And he's, you know, he's he's showing me, picking up the phone. He's talking a lot. He's saying he's um, having those conversations. And he'd really appreciate if he'd pass this along, that he's fine. And he's like, I, I love them. And uh, she's not the only child. So let them know. Um, and much appreciated, he's saying. What do you mean she's not the only child? What does that mean? Um, meaning that she, your daughter... Your daughter-in-law is not the only child they had. 
No, she was an only child. Well, I feel like there's more. Huh. Do that? Does she have children? Yeah. Are you doing that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, <laughs> and and actually, her daughter Lila, she just had a seizure today. She was in the hospital, but she uh-huh. was okay. It was a a fever seizure. Okay. Mhm. Mhm. Okay. Interesting. Um, and I know you just feel like he's watching mm-hmm. over. Yeah. Mhm. So that that's your granddaughter. Yeah. So that would have been Pete's granddaughter, also. Okay. Yes. 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 Mhm. Okay. Mhm. Well, I feel like everything is is moving in that right direction. Um, as for you and like career, it feels stagnant still because I feel like you. Um, and not that it's a bad thing at all, but I just mm-hmm. feel like there has, there just has to be like some decisions for you to stand in. That's that's what I'm feeling like. Okay. okay. Does that make sense? Well, I, I think I just kind of yeah. I need to figure out what direction I'm going in, and I yeah. just, I'm not very good at making those decisions. Cause I, I know, and then I feel like. And, Mm-hmm. Yeah, so do a, I love a little meditation, and I'm going to share one um, specific at the end of the show, which will help. Oh, um, oh great. Well, just, mm-hmm. just to stay in that in that kind of framework to know, okay, yes, here I'm going to go. And, and that's, we're going to talk about being that observer tonight, too. And what does that observer mean? It, it means watching, listening, and paying attention to the things that are around you and your own energy. So that's, a, it, it's, time to be still and by being still finding that time to do that you work and sitting down maybe use your journal and not have as many conversations spend time outdoors this will let you see the energy feel it know it and be more confident in order to take the steps to move forward mm-hmm. make sense yeah oh, yeah definitely well, i've been meditating every day and sometimes twice a day so nice. yeah I'm working on it <laughs> All right, love. Well, thank you so much. I'm climbing up those stairs. (laughs) Okay, good. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, good. Thank you, Jeannie. Thank you. All right, bye, Jillian. Okay, bye. So beautiful, right? I mean, it is hard, like, when we have to make a decision to to do something different in our life. Never an easy thing. No. Yeah. Um. Casey says we have another caller, so do you mind? No, absolutely. I'm so sorry. No, like I want to ask you all these questions. No. Oh, God. <laughs> all right, we'll take the caller, and then I'll ask Katie some more questions. Casey, can you hear me? All right, let's go. <laughs> okay. Hello. Hi, this is Jeannie. Who am I speaking Hi, with? Hi, Jeannie. This is Cheryl. This is Katie Coelho's mom. Great hi, Grandma. <laughs> Yay. Hi. Hey, hi. I, hi. Well, and this is my opportunity to thank you um, for all that you are doing for that little bundle of joy in our life. Um, I definitely see the energy in him, the energy in Katie, and the energy that he transfers to all of us. Um, yeah. It's just been an incredible journey for this family. And and I will say that is one strong child, a woman, adult mom that you have sitting there next to you to go through this journey that she is going through with Brady. Um, there's a I'm reason that cry. <laughs> I'm sorry, but no, Cheryl, I never <laughs> cry and I'm losing it. It's okay. No, you, it's okay because I have to say this. I mean, Jeannie, you and I have spoken in the past. It's like, you know, families go through their issues, and yes. this little boy has been sent to us in so many ways. I can't picture Brady any other way. And um, the resources that Katie and Jonathan have gone through and are going through to make sure this little boy gets anything and everything that he deserves, and to see Brayden. The energy that I watch him on Fridays, Jeannie, and the energy I get from that little boy and the love and the peace and Mm -hmm. the soothing. And Katie doesn't know this, but Friday, I cried my eyes out with this child because he is just an absolute blessing. And he's going to 
prove a lot of people wrong. He's I think a strong, he already has. He, he has. Yeah. He has, and he continues to. And that little attitude he has um, is because he's telling everybody, just watch me. Yeah. Just yeah. watch me. But um, I, Katie, like I said, brings him to you, and I can see, and I love that blanket. I wrap him and I in it every Friday at nap time. <laughs> mm, we all do. And, um, yeah, and um, I just wanted Katie to know that I'm very proud that she's on the show tonight to make awareness and to help other people because that's um, a big step. It's a, it's a big thing. It's, it's a lot. And yeah. um, as a, a mom and a grandma and being Katie's mom especially and being Brady's grandma, I couldn't be more proud and um, elated to have this gift that God has given us in Brady. Yes, yeah. I, I, so, I agree with you, and I think <laughs> that's so beautiful, and I think yeah. uh, you're right. God has blessed your family, and healing is upon you. And um, It is, from and, the, I, and I feel that um, very strongly, Jeannie, very strongly. I mean, very much so. There's a lot of energy going on, and it's a lot of positive, a lot of warm energy, and um, a lot of healing, which is, is fantastic. So, and, and I know that he enjoys coming to see you, and I know it helps Katie as well. So I think this is wonderful. Yeah. So I will Thank let you, you go back because I so definitely much. want to hear her continue. I'm very excited about <laughs> hearing some more. So yeah. but I just wanted to Proud. call in. I love you, Katie. <laughs> I love you. Mom. So, Thank you. Very proud of you. Very proud of you. Thanks. Oh all my right. gosh. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. You're That's welcome, guys. Night. I will continue. All right. You too. God bless. Bye. All right. Bye. Oh yeah. <laughs> like as as a mom and you know Katie actually is friends with my daughter, my oldest daughter Lauren. So that's how we know each other. Yeah. Um for a very long time. Yeah. <laughs> and so when you had Brayden, yeah. you but you weren't really like involved in Lauren's life very much. So no, yeah. it was like this this kind of like break in friendship. Not like like broken, no, but like but you know how years go on and whatever she people was having kids. Yeah, and, yeah. And so like and then all of a sudden, you know, I was like, I'm gonna you know send all these prayers and I don't know who reached out first, you, me. I don't remember. I think what ended up like Lauren has always been the type of friend where. Life gets crazy for us, but every single time there's been something in my life that's absolutely floored me or just wrecked me, she has been the first person that's there. She, I can depend on Lauren no matter if it's been a couple hours or weeks that we've just, and it's never been any anything angry. It's just been like life goes gets in the way. We both yeah. are crazy. And the moment she found out about Brayden, she had her friend, um, Brayden was in the hospital getting um, his G2 placed, and she had her friend Whitney, yeah. who is a doctor or a She's PA. She's a PA. A PA at CCM Children's Medical Center in Hartford. Our she little had <laughs> She had her come to Brayden's room, and I was getting food and I walked in and I just saw this woman standing with her phone and I automatically knew that it was Whitney because I, nobody else would be FaceTiming in my son's <laughs> hospital room yeah. and Lauren was hysterically crying in Target looking at Brayden <laughs> like that's just been how Lauren is I mean just she's just that constant front her and Jeff have always been those con I mean because of Lauren and Jeff I'm married to my husband <laughs> like they were the ones that were just brought our group of friends together and um I Braden has a great medical team that we've put together we've made sure but I always felt like something was missing and I knew that you um did Reiki therapy and like energy and I said to my husband I'm like you know I just feel like we can't just settle for science science and I think you absolutely need that but I think there always needs to be more and for I just thought that I would try it so I reached out to you and you were more than willing and and my husband can also will speak this too that it's been such a change in Brayden just first of all he's obsessed with you like the moment he he sees you. He starts laughing and wants to give you hugs and kisses. And well, he's just, multiple. He's yeah. multiple. I mean, I'm a little mama, biased, but you're my, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> But he just he feeds off of your energy and you giving us clues as to what would work for him and 
what would not work for him and you were definitely somebody that said to like have you just the first thing you said was like MRI have you seen the MRI have and we hadn't at that point and it was just those little indicators and how you go about with Brayden and the amethyst and the rose quartz those are things that definitely have helped and I've seen a ginormous change in Brayden since we started so we let's let's just slow it down yeah let me slow it down seven months Um, (laughs) so when I first started working with Brayden I was working with crystals that was one of the things that the angels had shown me is to bring in the crystals so Mm -hmm. we brought in amethyst and I was just using the stones that I have and then um, I think I gave you the smaller ones to take home Um, and so to place them like under the mattress yep and then it came to me that we needed to make him an amethyst blanket. Mm-hmm. Or first, I was thinking I was going to buy him one. So yeah. I could not find one. So I said to my daughter Lauren, "I'm like, can you help me make this? I know what it needs to be, mm-hmm. um, and that's just how I want it to look." And she immediately went out and got everything. I ordered the crystal. Yeah. And she stayed up and like she had it we had it done and like yeah like, Lauren no doesn't time. do anything small like no. blow if Lauren's got something in her mind she's and doing it that night anybody knows yeah. me you know that's how I roll <laughs> yeah. people are always my people that I work with they always like you need to slow down yeah. you go too fast but that's how it comes it's like yeah, it's it so comes, natural yeah. mm-hmm. so Lauren's the doer and she's yeah. like, that's what she's learned yeah and me. that blanket is that's Brayden's sleep blanket if yeah. he will not nap Nap, we just lay that on him and he just becomes so calm and he'll sleep two three hours when he's not a napper at all so, so it's, yeah so it's it has these little pockets and we have um they're they're like really small i want to say um, they're almost like sanded like uh, yeah yeah like they're they're tiny they're yeah. t- uh, tiny amethyst i can't think of the name that i want to use mm-hmm. but i can't get it whatever <laughs> um so we made pockets and put them in they're weighted around the blanket so that it's equally distributed so you could wrap him yeah. or he could lay on it mm-hmm. and um we made a cover for it so that they can take it off obviously because babies throw up yeah. and poop and <laughs> you know they get dirty yeah um that way he that she can wash it yeah. and then you can also take that and put it in the sunlight to which charge it the, yeah yeah which is really great yeah it's been fantastic i love it so that was one of the, the great things that yeah. we worked with yes yeah. So from the first day that you came, mm-hmm. and I think your mom is going to really appreciate this because the first time you came and we worked on Brayden, you, and I kind of explained this to you last time, you weren't really in your body. No. You you weren't that shiny girl that you are right now. Yeah. You were in fear. Yeah. You were worried that he wasn't going to live. Yeah. You were, I think, desperate for hope. Yep. And you're, I, if I'm correct, I, I feel like you had lost all faith. Yeah, uh, yeah. There was no. My husband and I are very faithful people, and I think it was just broken. Yeah, yeah. I think from your experience. Yeah. So we're not even like we're not even like talking about all the things that you had went through. Even like when you when you had him. Like, yeah. You want to tell them that that part, like when you delivered with the nurse who who was. You know, yes, and um, this is huge. Yeah, it was so. When obviously we had been prepared that Brayden wasn't going to survive birth, there was 50 50 chance. Um, so we had on top of our regular nurses and doctors, we had a whole NICU team in there ready. And my nurse, Cindy, who is just the most amazing nurse in the world, she, on top of pushing me through labor, um, when Brayden was born, all when they took him out, I just he was he was not your normal color um he definitely was like almost a gray and um he was not crying he didn't make any noises and my husband obviously went straight there and my nurse grabbed my face and and i was just screaming and crying being like please just tell me he's breathing is he breathing is he breathing and he was born um, not only with the neurological conditions, um, he was born with meconium in his lungs, and I believe the cord was wrapped around his neck two or three times. So they had to give him assistance to get him breathing, but my nurse was holding my face, and her face was right up against my face. And she was just saying, look at me, look at me, um, don't look anywhere else, just look at me. And then he cried. And um, 
he, it's the sound you're going to hear for the rest yeah, of the day. Yeah, but home. that's the one thing that I said. I was like, if he cries for every day for the rest, and the doctor was like, you're going to regret that. In a co-. But I, he cried, and she's like, okay, we're okay now. And I wasn't able to um, hold him. They tried to put him on my chest, but every time they put him on my chest, he would desat significantly. But they were able to put him in a warmer right next to me. And the PA, um, Jackie, in the NICU, normally they take the baby, they bring him right down to the NICU. She um, stayed up there, I think it was close to an hour. And she had Brayden in the warmer next to me. And he was um, born completely, um, I think they call it hypotonic, where there's no muscle tone whatsoever. He couldn't move. So he was just laying there but he gra- he could grab my finger and i remember the strength out of this kid's like three little fingers was amazing and he they kept him there for about an hour and then they had to like bring him down to the NICU to get everything started but um he that was the first bur- first big Braden move was he survived labor and yeah. we were told that there was a strong possibility that he wouldn't so right so here's that other that other aspect is the negative news that you heard all along yeah. was like this is worst case scenario yeah. he's not going to survive he might not even he might not even live through labor yeah like, we were yeah we were, had made a plan of what the, of, we had my um we had my husband's parents and my dad um basically in the delivery room as I was getting cleaned up they rushed them right in because we had expected um, that it wasn't going to be a good outcome so we had everyone sort of on phone call to come up and meet him if it didn't go well right so yeah (laughs) and then you went home well no I stayed we it was a 12 day make you stay um, which is any I feel for anyone who's ever in the NICU yes. it's awful um we had a 12-day NICU stay and they did all these testings and Breeden was um I believe one of the first few children with lysencephaly um that they knew had lysencephaly lysencephaly can typically be diagnosed either a first few days after birth because the child has a seizure or feeding difficulties or sometimes they have none of that until they're six seven months old so Brayden was one of the first babies there that they had gone in knowing that it was lysencephaly. So it, I, I remember one of the nurses being like, well, this is our crash course. Like we weren't prepared. We don't really know. Like we're kind of learning as we go. So they had all this test done and they told us that they wanted to do this one genetic test to test for a specific type of lysencephaly. And um, we were kind of excited at first, like, okay, there's going to be a reason for it. And then there was this one doctor who came in with a printout of what was going on, and she said, well, this is the type of lysencephaly that it is. The most common lifespan is six weeks, but at most you'll get 18 months, but at least you'll know when you decide to have future children. And I remember my husband and I like looking at each other and the PA who was sitting next to the doctor, all three of us looked at each other and we kind of like, you heard that, like it was that like, you heard that, right? And that was it. It was no further explanation. They set us up with hospice and we were sent home saying we would get the test results back in about two months. But basically like we went home preparing to lose our son at any moment in the first six weeks. That alone. Like, yeah, I, just going home. We were told of that, and then literally 10 minutes later, um, the hospice director came in and met with us and went over, like, end-of-life care and all that stuff. Right. Yeah. So no wonder when you came to the office <laughs> that you were in your body, that you mm-hmm. had retreated, that you had lost all your faith. I disassociated from everything yes. and anyone. And, like, for me, the the miracle moment happened when the angels were giving me all this information and you accepted it. So Mm -hmm. I always say that. It's like when I'm delivering, it's up to the person whether or not they're going to accept it in as if it's a healing tone. And you just stood there and you were like, yes, okay. You know, and this personal stuff that was coming up, it wasn't wasn't all just about Brayden. That was the other thing. Yeah. And, uh, and so that it was like each time got more and more in 
then they were showing me the angels were showing me that they it was actually going to change like yeah. your brain was going to develop there was mm-hmm. going to be some there was going to be a miracle moment yeah and that's when Jesus had come to me and said play the singing bowl mm-hmm. and I played the singing bowl for Brayden yeah and that was the day that was the day it all changed absolutely I, yeah from that day forward I feel like there's been miracle 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 it's, for you yeah it's been um he first of all the kid loves the singing bowl. He like, he's just the moment you play it, he closes his eyes and takes it all in. Um, yeah, it was definitely I think once we started coming to see you, it kind of it sort of just I felt like a lift almost. Like I felt like something had been sitting on my chest for the past two years, but most importantly, like the past nine months, um, prior when we found out to Brayden being here and um we you kept saying like we need to see the MRI and I Braden had a neurology his neurology six months of well first of all he had had the EEG which is for anybody that doesn't know it's a test that um monitors for seizure activity and things like that and that was really scary because younger at the younger you are with seizures the more effect it has on you because these anti-seizure medications talk and the EEG showed no seizure activity, which was absolutely just, a, I can't even describe how we felt because that was our biggest concern. And then his neurology appointment, the neurologist came in and was like, okay, well, asking us all these things about Braden, what's he doing, how's this, this, and then he was like, oh, have you guys seen his MRI? And I, it was just funny that that was sort of the first thing that he said. And we're like, no, he's like, oh yeah, that's right. It wasn't popping up the last time. And as soon as he pulled it up, like you could automatically to- tell, we were originally told Braden had no folds in the frontal part of his brain. And um, he had some, but not many in the posterior part of his brain. And there's no corpus callosum, which is basically the center part of your brain that helps the right unless I talk to you itself. As soon as he pulled up the MRI, it was super clear that there's like folds throughout Braden's entire brain. Um, they're shallow. They're, they don't look the way that like yours or my yeah, MRI would look, but they're there, which for us was just like, oh, what? Mm-hmm. Nobody had ever told us this before. And so, and he said the corpus, the corpus callosum is still obviously not there, but that changes just there's a possibility for more with Brayden rather than just like this is what it is and it's not going to get any better and it kind of just was a huge moment for us yeah because now here hope hope returned yeah hope came back for the first time in close to a year like it doesn't change the fact that Brayden isn't going to struggle and have to do so much in order to accomplish something small, but there's a chance now. Yeah. And I felt like there wasn't and before. And he's such a strong, little he's, determined oh boy. Goodness. Yeah. Like, um, Katie brought him after he had his birth to three, and they had been working on getting him on all fours yeah. and rocking back and forth. So he came in, and normally I lay him on the <laughs> table, and I just, he stays on his back. Well, he would not have it. And no. I'm like, what is going on, Brayden? Mm-hmm. So I'm like all right you want to be you know you want to be on your belly and Katie looked and she goes I think he wants to show you yeah and sure enough he started pushing and I got him you know with a little help and he just was on all fours and he was like talking and yep. laughing and around he's a show off oh it, my gosh he was he, he masters was like, something he's like guys do you see me yeah. like yeah. he's just very much He's a, he works so hard, and he is the best temperament. Like, he's just the most easygoing. Yep. I say I don't know where he gets it from because I'm not like that at all. But <laughs> he is just, like, he's so proud of himself, and it's almost his way of showing, like, you guys all doubted me, but, like, look at what a great, strong kid I am. Yeah. It's crazy. And he really is. Yeah. He, he's absolutely incredible. Yeah. So I am blessed beyond belief to, to, to share and to work with Brayden and now my dogs are chiming in yes, I'm um, excited too. <laughs> there you go. Um, but yeah it's it's so much fun yeah no, I yeah know. and to see you glowing again yeah. like that was she came in tonight and I was like glowing yeah. you're you're yeah you're it's TV. nice it's nice to feel like 
I can breathe yeah. again because I haven't in a very long time. Now you've had a you've had a whole lot of big life things happen to you. Mm-hmm. Um, this is not the first, Mm-mm. and you're handling. I have to say this with grace. Thank you. So you should be that. very proud of yourself. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, I kind of feel like I don't know. Everyone can have rough stuff go on, and I definitely am a huge person that falls and takes a really long time to get back up. But when you have a good support system like my husband is just stuff like this either makes you or breaks you and my husband has 100% stood up and been like nope let's do this like Mm -hmm. this is and I think you can always see the brighter side of things even though it's really 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 hard and see you're doing it yeah it's hard but you get there (laughs) I feel I'm so blessed I'm so happy that you came on and Mm -hmm. I know that our listeners are are grateful um, to be able to connect and hear your story and talk about Breeden and yeah absolutely no I just want to be I want that one person that goes through miscarriages or has a child that has extra needs just to feel like okay you're not the only one out there like it sometimes it happens and it's hard and it's awful but there's other people out there and we're all here and we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Yeah. Because this is our, you know, our, our life. path. Yes. You don't now looking back at the life experiences that my husband and I have both have and even leading up to it, Braden was sent to us for a reason and it all makes sense now. <laughs> like we wish it could be different for him not to have to struggle, but it makes sense. Yeah. Well, he's, he has to be who he is because yes. he's pulling it all together. Yes, absolutely. You know, he's, he's got your, your mom involved in all of this. Yeah, and my dad, feeling. my stepmom, my yeah. sisters, everybody. He's just my, his aunts, my husband's sisters. Like, he's just got, he's shown everybody a different side of life that I think that if Brayden hadn't been here, we would have never seen. And, you know, for us to lose our faith so much and to just feel, be very angry with God and be very angry just at the world, um, I think Braden showed us that, like, you can have deck of cards handed to you that basically tell you you're not going to be anything and you have and show that you that that's wrong. And I think it doesn't it only shows you that you have to be a better person and you have to pull your stuff together and be there for each other, because if you're not, this is going to destroy you. I think that's a really important point, because we hold on to our pains as if and and people do it in different ways, but they'll hold them. And that's the burden. That's the depression. Yeah. That's the, the anxiety. That's, that keeps us in that past. And we aren't allowed to see our future that way. Absolutely. We can't, that, that's where we lose the faith. Mm-hmm. So there's no light at the end of the tunnel, it seems. Yeah. And then God always is trying to get our attention. He's always sending us a little angel, you know, maybe it's a girlfriend who's calling or texting and you, you're ignoring it and maybe you don't hear it. So then all of a sudden, you know, then there's this other thing and then the, it, it, that's how it will happen. And yeah. all these God sparks will happen. Hopefully you wake up yeah. and that's when we're the observer. Yeah. When we take the time to be still, we can see it. We yeah. can see. Love. And I feel like for us, that was for, for my and Braden, that's when we came to see you. I think that was our first huge, and I can't thank you enough for what you've done, but like just a huge wake up moment and like, okay, you need to breathe because if you don't breathe, this kid's not going to do anything. And it's definitely been a huge change for everybody. Well, he's like my boyfriend now. He loves you. <laughs> like, he's he's like, like, he wants nothing to do with me when he comes so to So funny. See you. We're like, I was like kissing him goodbye <laughs> and kissing his neck and he just did it wouldn't stop. He no. was like, no more, more, yeah, no. more, lifting his neck. And, yeah. and he's just so He's smart. got it rough. I mean, nobody loves him. Nobody no. loves him. <laughs> like, yeah. No, he just, he he loves you. And, and it's so funny when I, like, even tell Jonathan after sessions, like, Brayden's in the background, like, talking and, like, Dad, guess what <laughs> we did? And you know what? She did the singing bowl, and he's just. He, he's just great. He's yeah, and Jonathan's not a fan of the singing bowl, which is no, so funny. No, he doesn't. Like, I play it at night. Like, we have a little, like, playlist, and he's like, I just feel he hear bells ringing all yeah. night. But he like he he's definitely open to everything else. It's just the singing bowl. He's not. I have people that either <laughs> love them or hate them. So... I did a meditation at our open house, and one woman, she actually closed her ears, and she's like, this hurts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I I did a healing session on a woman the other day who has breast cancer, and 
she's like, I was floating. Yeah, it's and that it's a it's a it's an intense sound. It so really it's is either one way or the other. But Braden from the get go, I thought he was gonna lose his mind and cry because it is very loud and it's sharp and it's intense. He just was like, This is my me moment. Let me have my moment. Yeah. People. And when he stopped, he like looked at you like Well, when Jesus says to do something you do it. Yeah. So I was like, Okay, this is gonna this is like a beautiful thing. Yeah. So um and there's something about that. The, there is a magic, and there's actually science behind the singing bowls because it is about the sound that we were, like that spark sound when we were conceived. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there's different notes to different singing bowls. Mm-hmm. And, you know, some are high quality and some aren't. Yeah. And the particular one we used is, I, I got it in Hawaii. It's actually very incredible because it's rose quartz mixed with um, platinum. Oh, wow. So it has has some properties to it some um uh, just unbelievable yeah anyways yeah, enough that. about that yeah. <laughs> well thank you so much for for coming on and no, sharing and i totally like i'm in awe thank you no thank you so much for and thank you for everything you've done for us yeah. i mean i can't thank you enough i know brayden he's listening right now yeah well so i can't wait to he see should you be asleep, but he's listening right and i know he loves you and he's so appreciative so so i uh, will see you soon yeah. and i'm gonna let you go visit with lauren yeah. so she's she's outside with the kids and, right. I'll, and i'll finish up the show uh, thank you thank you honey i'm gonna take a breather now that was huge right casey that was incredible i mean, i'm and i know I know, right? And I'm sure I know Kathy. She's crying over there. Oh, she texted me. She couldn't I, breathe. You know, yeah, <laughs> I know, right? Sorry, I'm just. I just eat a pistachio. I don't know why I put that in my mouth while I'm on the, on the radio show, but I don't know. Apparently, I needed a snack. So let me take my water and get that down. Hold on. Oh, well, okay. when you're ready. I got my Aunt Patty here that has a question for you. Sure. Go right ahead. You ready? Okay. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. I have a great Hi, Aunt daughter. Patty. Hi. How are you, Jeannie? <laughs> I talked to you. Uh, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I talked to you quite a while ago, but anyway, I have a question. My granddaughter is going to be start. great granddaughter, is going to be starting school in the fall, and she's going to be in kindergarten. She's five years old. Mm-hmm. And she has a speech problem. And I'm concerned about okay. her being uh, bullied or teased. So um, is she getting any help for the speech impediment? Uh, just at school when she went to preschool, preschool this fall. Okay. Or in the spring. Okay. And it, does it have to do with that she's... Um, slurring her words is she is she stuttering what is she doing well it's not stuttering it's just like a big line just a big just nothing really comes out um so you can understand there's some things you can understand very very well and then in the next sentence okay. it's, it's hard for her. and she's five now five she just turned five and what she just turned five yeah um And have they thought about, like, not sending her to kindergarten and giving her an extra year? No. And uh, and everything else, she is, she's ready for school. I mean, she's... Yeah. She's smart. She's a smart little girl. Yeah. Not that I'm I'm just asking. Yeah, no. No, I understand that, so... They're not showing me, like, any, like, huge concerns, like it's going to be an issue. Um, okay. I feel like it's going to be something that she's kind of kind of grow out of. Okay. Um, that's all I'm feeling. But I don't feel like she's, uh, I feel like it's going to be more, like, normal things. And I feel like she's going to have those nice friends, those close friends. And I don't feel like she's going to be, like, in a big group of friends, so to speak. Right. Um, yeah. And she does, she feels like she's probably going to be musical and... You know, love love the arts type oh, of thing. Oh, she loves to sing. Is yeah, she playing so. an instrument already? No, no. She just loves to sing. Okay. Yeah, so I, she's totally like, I get all that musical around her. So the balance for her, I think, is like having, being able to do her art and being able to be musical. Very important things for her. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I guess that was all of my question. All right. <laughs> 
Well, thank you so much. Nice to talk with you again. Well, thank you. Thank you, Jeannie. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. Casey, over there with your family, it's so cute. (laughs) Well, I had uh, (laughs) my mom with her two sisters and my grandma, you know, their mother down here and their best friend who's almost a sister from across. They grew up from across the street, so it was quite a treat to see them all together here tonight. I know. Well, a big shout out to the Johansson family. Yeah. <laughs> woo, woo. So let me let me get back to the. I wanted to share my wellness tip, but I wanted to finish up also with the being the observer. Um, so, as I was talking earlier with Jillian, one of the great ways that we can start to be an observer is doing this meditation, and it's a a meditation where we're going to manifest and and visualize and we're going to we're going to just break it down really slowly um because there's several steps to it but we'll only do one step tonight so it just like with any other meditation you're going to get yourself in that quiet space and you know i'm always saying do that cycle breathing where you're breathing in through your nose nice and slow and controlled and then exhaling out of your mouth And so when you get yourself nice and comfortable and you've taken several breaths and you feel like your body is starting to relax, this is when you're going to start to bring your awareness to the soles of your feet. So we're going to open up the lower root chakra, which is in the soles of the feet. This is that Christ point I've talked about. This is your connection to your place here on earth. So as you're breathing and as you're relaxing and letting go, you're going to bring your awareness all the way to the soles of your feet and you're going to start to feel that root chakra begin to open. Notice if there's any colors, any any uh, feeling of stuck energy, any light, any any movement. So we're just going to let it be. We're not going to like follow any of the thoughts that are going to bring you anywhere. What we're doing here is we're just basically asking to align this energy center with the divine so we're going to call on archangel michael here and we're going to just pray archangel michael please connect this lower root chakra my lower root chakra to the divine allow the divine love to move in there so now now you're going to imagine it being filled with this golden light and it's it's open it's feeling beautiful and you can feel that light taking up every single inch of your foot and it's actually like just filling your your whole leg it's just feeling so good right now it's here now you're open now you're releasing whatever you need to release not paying attention to to where it's going you're just staying in love now we're going to go to that manifestation that that thought, the the things that we want to visualize and bring forward in our life, whatever that may be for you. So Jillian was talking about maybe a new a new position or a new job. So here we can think about this. We can think about what will that look like. So as this area is filling with that golden light, and we're thinking about what we want to manifest, they are going to see it in front of us. We're going to see it almost like on a screen. Um, playing before us and being nice and still allowing whatever scene needs to come forward allowing maybe it's words maybe um, it's just a visual but allowing it to just be still and at the same time we're also going to fill ourselves with a strength because standing in the root chakra in the, the lower root in this Christ point is owning the place here on earth that belongs to just you. It's having the confidence. It's having the strength. It's having the gumption, if you will. It's having peace of mind, well-being in that place that those things that you desire can come to you as long as they're in that alignment with the divine. So it's like a magic that happens. It just shifts. So as you see yourself becoming more confident, brighter, shinier, this is where you're going to stay. So I invite you to do this meditation every day. Just every single day, go ahead and do this meditation. And then next week, we'll work on the next chakra. So we'll practice it for a week. 
grab your journal, keep it by you as you're doing it. That way you can jot down anything that comes up. Be the observer. Pay attention. See yourself. Be the love that you've always wished you would receive. Be it for yourself. Perfect. So, there you have that. I'm going to share my wellness tip really quick before we run out of time. And that is the elderflower, which if you guys watched my Facebook Live the other day for Angel's World, where I do the angel card reading, I talked about elderflower because I had an elderflower lemonade. And it was so much fun because it was it looked like a wine bottle. So we just had a good time with it. So anyways, elderflower actually is the flower of the plant that also produces elderberries. But this is a completely different thing. It's it You would just use elderflower. And they would make a tea or a tincture out of it. Um, so what you can use it for and what it is known to be good for is it's a huge anti-inflammatory. So amazing for um, known to help with sinuses and respiratory issues. And um, it's, actually, it's actually antibacterial. It's known to also like bacteria that go in hospitals that, that are hard to get rid of, it's known to like break them and, and get rid of them. So it reduces pain from swelling in joints. It also can be used as an antiseptic, uh, as a mouthwash people use it for. It's rich in bioflavonoids, so that means it's a known anti-cancer as well. It can be dried into a tea. Um, and the interesting thing about the plant is the leaves, the twigs, and the roots are toxic, but the flowers and the berries are safe. Amazing. Of course, with any of the wellness tips that I share, always ask your healthcare practitioner before you introduce them into your diet, especially if you're on medications. Um, so we don't want to have anything, you know, counteract with each other. Um... Whew, I feel like I'm like running out of air myself. So we have a couple great events coming up, Conversations with Heaven. It's going to be a live reading at Harry Brook Park in New Milford. This is a charity event, and you can get your tickets right on in Spirit Healing Studio. Um, and also, they're, I think they're on Facebook, too. You can follow a link there. It is 824, so the 24th of August, and starts at 7 p.m. So we would love to see you guys there. We also have um, at the studio, there's a date night. It's a stretch and connect, and that's August 11th. We have meditations and aromatherapy. That's going to be starting up in September, September 6th. And we are going to be filming a live studio audience show coming up in two weeks. April, I'm I'm sorry, April, um, August 14th. And Casey, this is new for you because you didn't know we were going to do this. Um, but we're going to be having Cooper on the show. And you may remember Cooper and his mom. Um, they had been on the show, it's probably like almost a year ago. So they're going to return. And we're going to do this at the studio. And we're actually going to do some live readings before we go on air with Cooper's interview. So we'd love to have you. I'm going to have some tickets on the website. They'll be ready tomorrow. Um, if you're interested, you can... Send me an email, genie at geniestreet.com. We will have a limited amount of tickets, and it will be free. Complimentary. Boom. Casey says we have a caller, and it's 8 p.m. Caller, can, Casey, let's do it really quick. Can we do one quick one here? It's my friend Ron from Nevada. Yeah. So. Okay. Hi, Danny. All right. Here Hi, you. Hi how are Ron you? from Nevada. Hi, Ron. How are you? Oh, I've had better days, but I'm not complaining right now. Okay, what's going on, Ron? Oh, uh, I've been fighting cancer for three months or so. And yeah. I'm going through chemo and radiation, and it's just wearing me down. Yeah, I feel like that, too. I feel like your energy levels is kind of plummeted. Are you able to rest at all? Oh, uh, Yesterday was the last day of work, so now i got to focus on rest and rehabilitation, I guess. Right. Are you doing any alternate alternative uh, therapies as well, Ron? 
Uh, right now, I'm just sticking to the regimen. Uh, you know, radiation every day, chemotherapy once a week, and trying to get through that part. Okay. And can you can you uh, tell me what type of cancer it is? Uh, it's throat cancer. Um, it was a squamous cell carcinoma that was disinfected all of my lymph nodes in my throat. Okay. Yeah, and so I'm getting. Uh, that's why I'm like kind of around the lung as well. Are are you more like susceptible to like bronchitis and stuff? When I was a kid, I was, but not 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 since I was an okay. adult. Okay. Yeah, it just feels like there's like, and it could be from the the medication because your lungs feel like it feels like it's hard for you to take a deep breath in. Well, I'll get that out of right now. Right now, we're having big issues with. The wildfires in California and Nevada and the air quality is so poor okay. you just can't breathe. Yeah. Um, and I feel like there's some pr- is there some pressure on your chest as well, Ron? Not really. No. It's it's mostly that is that where they're doing the radiation? They're doing the radiation right around my jawline. Okay. And it's it's giving me sores and complications and eating and drinking all that and even breathing if I don't lubricate it's just a chore yeah and that's the thing with that radiation it's um, it's it's like toxic <laughs> you know you think yeah. it's the most toxic but the radiation uh, it you know yeah. it does its job like, what it's supposed to do yeah um, it's a very cumulative effect, though. After after four weeks, it just everything's compiled. Yeah, and how about your taste buds? Have they been affected too, Ron? Oh, I can't taste anything but coffee. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, that there again, that makes eating a chore because there's no taste to go along with yeah. the job. Yeah. Uh, I would love to just send you some healing. Um, that's what I'm going to do, if that's okay for you. So all you need to do is just breathe and um, and just accept it, and that's what I'm going to send you right now, okay? Oh, that, that's that. That is greatly appreciated. Yeah. My, my friends and family have all been sending good thoughts and prayers, and I'm just glad it's there because it's helping me through. Are you able to um, to put like an ice cube in your mouth? Uh, actually, cold hurts. Hot hurts. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So it's a lot warm water or cold soup. Okay. So I'm worried about going for our feeding tube tomorrow, so I can get some nutrition. That's one right. of the. Uh, one of the things that's on my mind is yeah. So I feel like well, you're in, I, I you're in like rough shape, right? There's like so much going on. Oh yeah, absolutely. Everything's yeah. happened, you know, at once, and yeah, you know, I was hoping to get through, but like I said, the cumulative effect is just it's starting to it's starting to wear on me. Yeah. Um, and I feel like you've been a fighter, like that's just the energy that you've had, but I feel like that fight for you has kind of quieted down. Um, like, I just feel like you're exhausted. You're, you've exhausted all your resources, like, um, your body like can't support it. So that, nutrition wise, right there. yeah, nutrition wise, I feel like your body isn't uh, up to par with like being able to support itself. And that's why I feel oh, like you're no. I lost 40 odd pounds as it started. Yeah. Yeah. And when did you start this? Uh, it's four weeks with all the treatment. I was diagnosed a month before that. Okay. And so tomorrow you're going to be having that surgery to put the feeding tube in? Yes. Yes, I will. Okay. And are you able to do any supplements or, or they do they have you any on anything like that to increase your your vitamins and um, nutrients in your body? If I can swallow I can take, but right now 
like I said, swallowing is the job, and they're supposed to be setting me up with a whole tube feeding regime that's supposed to help. And yeah. Well, they they do have the like liquid um, liquid vitamins. I I would love for you to be able to go to like a nutritionist, like somebody that specializes with cancer patients to get those nutritions in you to get the the vitamins and the minerals that your body needs to like regenerate itself um right, i don't know right. if that's some, something that you have near you um, actually yeah i'll be meeting with the nutritionist after after the tube is in and you know okay. starting a regime i hope so uh, um, yeah, it actually right, would right. it would actually be more of you know, it's probably going to be a little bit of a different nutritionist you're going to need. You're going to need more of a holistic type of practitioner um, who has, uh, you know, some knowledge in a different type of knowledge. So it's like kind of balancing between like what we were talking about earlier on the show of having like your your regular science-based doctors and then having, you know, your holistic practitioners who can bring in um we have knowledge of, of science, but also have that spirituality as well and have knowledge of like the uh, raw foods and superfoods, things that can really help your body regenerate. That's what I'm feeling. I've actually got a friend of mine who, who is, who does that in Connecticut. I, I feel I should look her up. Yeah. Who, and who is that? Oh, uh, her name is Laura. She's a high that school That would be, friend. yeah. So I, that's where I feel like you would, you would really benefit and that you could gain some of your strength back. Oh, I will try that. I'll reach out. Hold on. My friend is texting me. I think she's meaning for me to tell you this guy's name. Uh, I'm just want to make oh. sure <laughs> she's sending me. I love that. I love the, that we can do this. Um, she's giving so, me a name. If you want to send it to, Casey, send it to Casey, you can send it straight to me. I will. I will. She, I'm just waiting for her to answer me back. So, oh. um, this would be absolutely great. And we can, we can do, you know, energy healing over, over the phone. You know, that can be totally done. Um, oh, yeah, cool. she's saying this is, this is exactly who you should talk to. She says his name is Donnie Yance, and he's in Oregon. Oh, at okay. The, at the Madiri Foundation. Okay. So uh, I'm going to read. I'm going to spell this for Casey because he can write it down. M E D E R I Foundation, and Donnie Yance, and it's in Oregon. So he will add that into the show notes, and he can send that to you as well. So I oh, appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome, Ron. And listen, I'm going to send you some extra healing tonight, and just keep resting. Keep your keep your thoughts high. You can do this. Oh, you can do this. That, that's that, that's all I want to do is get it get it over where they can put it behind me. Thank yeah. You. You're Thank welcome. You. God bless, Ron. Thanks. I'll be in touch. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Bye now. Good night. Good night. Bye. Wow. Yeah, I know he's Casey, been having a rough. All that yeah, yes, and I'll I'll put it in the show notes. And I know he's been having a rough time from the notes. I've been you know in a group with a bunch of his friends and family. So I was glad he was he hasn't had the strength to call, but he put it together and was able to call in tonight. So I'm glad you uh, went a few minutes right. over here. You want to talk? Done? Okay. Um, I have Maisie here, and she all wants right. to say hi to everybody. Maisie, say. Hi, everybody. Hi, buddy. Hi, everybody. <laughs> yeah, and you're you sleep over tonight? Yeah. 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 All right, a sleepover. We're talking about angels. Maybe we can't stop for three days. All right, you go in the other room. I'll be there in a minute. I love you. All right, kids are out of the pool, and they are ready for mom mom to come and share with them. So I am going to say good night, and I'm going to also say thank you to our callers. Thank you so much to who joined me tonight um, the beautiful healing that's come for their family um, what, an, what a miracle what a miracle uh, and there's there's so much to that story which is is unsaid but you got the gist of it you know the miracle moments that happen so if we believe in them they can come for us alright my loves I will see you next week right here on KBJB Radio and you know I know what I know because angels don't lie God bless